What is PPE? It is the acronym for Personal Protective Equipment. It can be single use, which is disposable, or multiple use, which is reusable. It is an equipment worn to protect an individual from external hazards. PPE includes face mask, head cover, gloves, goggles, boot cover, protective clothing, and many more. It is an equipment with mechanisms that serve to provide an impermeable barrier against any hazardous materials. It is used to prevent and minimize the exposure of hazardous material by either filtering, absorbing, or reacting to it. Choosing types of PPE material for certain hazards are important. Some PPE is designed to use the overpressure or directional airflow to keep contaminated air away from any routes of entry, such as protective face mask. Hazardous substances may enter the body along several different pathways, such as by inhalation or breathing through the respiratory tract, where microorganisms may enter the lungs. Or by ingestion, which substances passes through gastrointestinal tract for digestion. Or through our largest organ, which is skin. Cut or open wounds, microorganisms can easily enter the body if the wound is not treated properly. Or through our eyes, hazardous substances may enter the body through direct contact, splashes, airborne droplets, or particles. There are many types of PPE material, which is why it is important to take notice of the types of material used to design PPE for certain conditions or certain hazards. Now we look at the barrier material of the PPE. So we look at the penetration of the PPE material. The lower the penetration, the material is able to provide a barrier to the wearer, where it minimizes or blocks the bypass or perforation of hazardous substances from having contact with the wearer. Same goes to the permeation of the PPE material. The lower the permeation of the material, it will be more difficult for the hazardous substances to diffuse or dissolve into the PPE material and migrate through it to cause any potential harm to an individual. One of the examples of the PPE material which has less penetration and permeation is the high-density polyethylene. The lower the penetration and permeation, it has a higher effectiveness of the material. However, when there are holes in the materials or imperfect seals or seams on the PPE, it will reduce the effectiveness of the protection because of the hazardous substances can pass through the opening and potentially enter the body. For fibrous material, a high degree of porosity will mean a higher filtering capacity. It has narrow pore size distribution and smaller gap between fibers. Macroporous materials may be used for particulate filtration, which is particle pollution filtration and it has lesser resistance to airflow compared to microporous material, which has higher airflow resistance. The more highly porous a material, the less dense and durable it will be. Higher filtration means better purification of air passing through the porous materials, which is why some PPE have multiple layers design that are made of multiple different fibrous material. The higher the porosity and filtration will determine the effectiveness of the materials for the PPE design. There are some PPE barrier materials that use the system that is directional airflow. The contaminated air must flow in through the purification systems or filtration layers, such as the protective mask. Then exhale out through the mask and create the overpressure which aids to prevent the backflow of contaminants. However, when wearing protective mask or any PPE that is using the directional airflow system, it is best that we try to minimize the leaky closures to reduce the potential of contaminants 
or hazardous substances to flow back into the individual. There are many other barrier materials that are used to design for clarity of vision, communication, or dexterity and touch sensitivity. Now we know that PPE is one to protect the wearer from external hazard. But what are the external hazards? It can be biological agents, contaminated devices, chemical agents, or radiological agents. It can be in the form of gas, vapor, aerosol which is the airborne particles or liquid. Biological agents are any living microorganisms that have the potential to cause disease to an exposed individual. It can have the potential to reproduce or multiply in the body. It can potentially be lethal due to the production of toxins by the microorganisms, such as bacteria, viruses, or high hazard organisms, which is such as contagious microorganism that has the potential to cause an outbreak, illness, or death. Next is contaminated devices and environment, or can be considered as physical hazards. It is any blood or body fluid contaminated object, or any surrounding environment that has the risk or potential to cause harm. Such as the needle holder, medical professionals usually have their gloves on during procedures. Next is chemical agents. It is any chemicals that have the potential to cause damage and disruptions to the bodily functions due to the chemical reactions that occur when an individual is exposed to it. Such as toxins, poisons, or any chemicals that have the hazardous effects. Next is radiological agents. It is any particles that have the potential to damage living systems as the result to the high energy radiation interaction or exposure. Radioactive decay that produces high energy radiation or particles that are hazardous to the body, such as radiological particles. Why is it important to wear PPE in certain situations? It is to protect the professionals in every occupation that might have to be exposed to the external hazards. And it is to provide a barrier in the transmission of contaminants. PPE can also prevent work-related injury, illness, and death. The practice of wearing PPE is to ensure the workplace is safe and regulations are of the OSHA standard, which is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration standards. It is very important to have the correct disposal and storage method for PPE to avoid the potential cross-contamination, which is the transfer of harmful microorganism from one person, object, or place to another. After PPE is disposed, it is best that we wash our hands with proper hand washing or hand sanitizing techniques. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to our channel, follow us on our Facebook page for more of our updates.